Hello again and welcome to Gavit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and welcome to the last Sculpt January 2019. The topic today, number 31, was Extreme Pose. I'm trying to remember now. It's going to be one of those deliveries once again, isn't it? Uh, I'm pleased with how this one turned out. It was really good fun and uh, just wanted to, that's mainly what I wanted to do today. Have fun for the last one and did a bit of texture painting as well. So I'll talk you through the nuances of that in a second. I started with a skin modifier, as you can see on the screen, and uh, that was fairly straightforward, no problems. Uh, it was, I went from a particular reference image, I'm doing, it's sort of Ren from Ren and Stimpy. Uh, if you haven't heard of that, then uh, look it up, it's sort of got a cult following it seems. I remember watching that when I was a kid and thinking, this is weird, but I like it for some reason. Uh, it's sort of one of those things you watch and then you sort of feel a bit sick afterwards. Yeah, it's that type of thing. Uh, got a kind of interesting uh, story behind it as well about getting cancelled and all this sort of stuff. But anyway, you can look that up yourself. So uh, I did have a reference image that I was going by and that was my main one. I did have a look at another few uh, just to get some inspiration for how I can turn it into 3D because it's always uh, tricky turning something from 2D into 3D, especially when they're sort of cartoon and extreme poses. They sometimes just don't work uh, so in 3D or in life in general. Uh, of course, cartoons, 2D cartoons can't work in life unless you've seen uh, Who Framed Robert, Roger Rabbit or whatever it is. Anyway, uh, starting to ramble already. Uh, so uh, getting that into 3D was um, sort of the challenge, as it were. Uh, but it wasn't too tough because in many ways, you're, you're, it's quite a simple sculpt uh, looking at it. Um, it's more about the pose, uh, so hopefully that sort of comes across. I could have taken that a bit further, I think. Um, I only did one um, sort of iteration, uh, one test, and I should have gone with a couple uh, just to see um, if I could you know, make it even more extreme and more funny. And I should have tried something like bendy bones as well. I just suddenly thought, oh, well, how does that work? Uh, and I should have looked it up really, because I think you can really, well, you can bend the bones and that could have been quite fun and interesting. Uh, so I need to do a bit of research on that really. Uh, really for animation, uh, May, uh, hoping to do an, an animation uh, type uh, Sculpt January scenario. So rather than doing it once every day, I think once every two days, uh, to an animation, a nice easy one. More a sort of uh, follow along course perhaps rather than um, strictly um, doing, going off the rails with this sort of thing. Uh, so it will be less creative I think, but uh, we'll, we'll see, I still haven't decided and uh, I'm not particularly good at organizing things. So uh, hopefully I'll make something of it and we can have a bit of fun there. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we get on anyway. These are humble beginnings I'm sure, but it'll be fun just to have a go. Yeah, so watch out for that. Uh, it's uh, January may be over, Sculpt January may be over, but there's more to come on the horizon on Gavit Media. Oh, I'm, I'm no good at this advertising malarkey. Anyway, so uh, I did a really basic um, rig. I don't know why I planned the rig sort of at this stage. Um, I, would, I think I'm getting a, a slightly delirious. You know when you just go into autopilot because you're a bit tired? Uh, and uh, I, I went to bed uh, last night and I slept for, I think it was 10 hours and sort of, uh, because I just went to bed about half eight and woke up and that's nine and a half hours. But still, it, it seemed like a long time. Uh, so uh, I was a bit dopey when I was doing this and I suddenly thought, I haven't actually started sculpting yet. And usually I do a bit of sculpting before going into the rig and posing. And uh, that's always the tricky bit and that's the bit that takes a bit of experience to learn is when to go from your um, Dyn Topo uh, and are you going to use a multi-resolution modifier and that's if you want to get any finer detail and uh, when do you start posing. Uh, in this case I was thinking I'll keep it a very symmetrical pose but actually I changed my mind on that one so I'm glad I did a fair bit of sculpting uh, first. And of course, it, you need to keep symmetry on so you can do half the work. Uh, that's the important bit behind that. So um, push it as far as you can uh, with symmetry turned on before you rig. You may have to decimate before you rig though, um, which I found um, I needed to do a couple of times. Uh, there's, um, I did a, um, so I sculpted the sort of basics uh, shape and then I did a detailed flood fill, uh, which is really glitchy. So save your work, do the detailed flood fill, wait for the crash, load it up, do it again and it will work. Uh, someone told me that online, I was skeptical, but that that is exa exactly what happens. You have to sort of let it crash and then go back into it uh, to do it. So it's quite strange. 
Uh, you can see doing sort of really basic toenails, a belly button, but nothing much to the body. I probably could have pushed this a bit further. I only spent, uh, the recording time was two and a half hours. It, it took me a lot longer for some reason. Uh, so I started this and did a bit of this yesterday, uh, yesterday lunchtime in Digital Art Club. Uh, so only a minor bit, uh, and then uh, did a fair bit today. But uh, the recording time says it's only two and a half hours, and I'm surprised at that. It felt like a lot longer. And that's uh, me sort of taking lots of breaks and uh, coming back to it. And there was a lot of figuring out how I was going to go about doing it. Uh, and that takes a fair bit of time, like this bit. How am I going to connect the head to the body and all this sort of stuff? And uh, I decided to sort of lie it down on its side. And it's a bit of a weird way of doing it. And uh, someone's probably going to, as per usual on YouTube, say, why didn't you do it this way? And I think, oh yeah, I should have just done that. <laughs> and that's quite common, but I really appreciate it when people tell me this. Because it kind of embeds these um, workflows into my brain and helps me get better, so that's great. I started off with the eyes doing symmetry, and I thought that I'd do them as separate shapes this time, because uh, one, I wanted them to be nice and glossy, and I didn't want to have to paint them uh, paint the whole sort of gloss in uh, because the eyes are quite a feature in this particular sculpt uh, so uh, keeping them as separate object made sense I did uh, make the one bigger than the other sort of this weird uh, crazy look about this character um, so uh, there was I went out of symmetry um, after a while um, but getting the basics first before uh, coming away from symmetry I think in a second I do another detailed flood fill I, this it's interesting really, cartoon characters, you can really uh, just play around a fair bit with the face and have a bit of fun. Uh, and it kind of just works. Uh, that's probably a silly thing to say, but maybe I'm just sort of getting more experience, maybe I'm getting better at this. Uh, but I found it didn't take me too long to come up with a kind of funny, interesting face. I was going, I suppose it's probably because I was going from a 2D reference image, uh, which was uh, pretty good, so uh, it was easy for me to um, come up with this shape and uh, put it all together. So that uh, stage was nice and quick. Um, I mean, I, I, I did adapt the 2D um, image a fair bit, really. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I'll try and remember to put it on screen. Uh, so hopefully I'll put it on the screen a bit earlier uh, so you can see uh, what I'm going from. Uh, maybe I should put that in the corner and keep it there because it's so close to the reference image. Uh, but like I said, I did adapt it a bit and change the symmetry a bit and stuff like that. The teeth were quite fun. I saw some people doing uh, sort of a 3D version of cartoon characters, but making them uh, look real. Uh, just look that up, realistic cartoon characters, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, and they look uh, pretty hideous. There's a SpongeBob SquarePants one, uh, and it just looks horrendous, but it looks good as well, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's horrendously ugly, but looks great. Uh, so I was kind of going for a bit of that here. Um, I would have had to have texture painted a lot more. And, uh, and actually, when texture painting, uh, I just did a really basic decimate, and that's not very good, uh, because uh, when it's, the decimation makes uh, different sized triangles. And Blender doesn't seem to like that when it unwraps, uh, and sometimes it puts triangles on top of each other. And you'll notice when I'm texture painting later on that uh, when I texture paint some parts, uh, I must have missed the fact that they'd overlapped and it's painting on other parts as well. So if you ever get that sort of tiny little glitches in your painting, where you're painting on one bit and it's appearing on another area, that's because your UVs are overlapping uh, and you need to go into your UV editor uh, before that stage ideally uh, and tidy them up a bit. It may be that you'll be able to edit them slightly at that stage, uh, but it's best to do it straight away. And it's much better to have a fairly even topology when you're unwrapping. So taking it across into Instant Mesh or similar, um, well, I don't know of any programs that are similar, <laughs> I'm sure there are some, um, it is a good idea. So Instant Mesh is great because uh, it turns your mesh into quads and it's a nice even distribution of quads as well. Uh, so when you unwrap, it tends to be a bit smoother and cleaner. Uh, and you can always do the sort of multi-resolution modifier if you want to add detail or shrink wrap it to your um, original die and topo. And I should have done that. It would have probably taken me an extra 15 minutes, which isn't too bad really. Um, but it's just something else to think about. Sometimes you think, I just want to get on and start painting. Because actually I'm not that experienced at painting in 2.8 and it's not that simple. <laughs> there's, uh, there's some definite glitches. I thought it was just me. but. Uh, when I went into text painting uh, and started painting, the, 
the texture doesn't appear so you have to uh, one go into edit mode and back out and then sometimes it appears uh, change uh, make sure overlays aren't turned on and then turn them off again uh, and then turn them on again and then sometimes it appears uh, I'm th maybe there's some setting that I'm not getting right I, I think someone did mention it in one of my YouTube videos oh you, it's you need to go into such and such and change this but I can't remember what they said and it was uh, quite a while ago now uh, so I can't find the comment either. <laughs> I'm not doing very well there. Um, I do, honestly, I do listen to all the comments and read all the comments I get, but I might not be taking them in and remembering them. That's the only problem. And I'm dreadful at remembering names. Uh, some people regularly uh, comment on my stuff and are really helpful, so thank you very much. Uh, Ian in particular, he always writes a lot. Ian S, I think, uh, I think it is. Uh, always writes a lot with lots of advice. So look at his um, comments. They're really useful. Uh, so thank you, Ian. Uh, anyway, uh, back to the sort of texture painting. Well, you can see me posing now. I suppose I should talk about that in texture painting when you see it. Uh, the posing was good fun. Uh, and I, this is where I went it's kind of off script and away from the um, reference image. Uh, and I thought it just, it almost looked like he's jumping in the air at, uh, and I don't know, it, it, <laughs> it was just good fun. Uh, pulling and pushing him all over the place. Uh, that's where I would have liked to have gone really extreme and stretch the bone. So I think that's what you can do with bendy bones. You can sort of, uh, there's your forearm and you can pull it out and stretch it. And that seems quite a fun idea really. And uh, it would have been nice to experiment and test with test that. Uh, but I think you have to change the bones to bendy bones, something like that. Um, I've seen people do it, but I've not done it myself. So uh, my lack of experience again, looking forward to animation, I'll advertise that again. Uh, I better start, I better actually get my finger out and start doing it and sorting that out, I suppose. Uh, it's probably about time, isn't it? Um, about now to plan something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make it really small and simple to start off with. So if you want to take part, then let me uh, just have fun with me. Anyway, uh, back to the sculpt. <laughs> uh, so here I go off, uh, off the symmetry and I just start pulling the mesh around. I've changed the eyeballs first and then pulling the mesh around the eyes. That was fairly nice and simple. Um, I was really quite pleased with how the teeth and gums and tongue came out. Uh, it just sort of worked and I thought, oh, that's not as bad as I, and painful as I thought it was gonna be. That's usually quite detailed, intricate work and it didn't take too long. So that was quite fun. Uh, so <clears throat> I got to this point and um, happy. So I thought maybe I will do a bit of texture painting as well. Uh, that's when I, it started to crash. <laughs> uh, the undo glitch happens in texture painting as well, it seems. And it's really annoying because I'm upset with the fact that they've taken away control F to sort of center your brush. So you could move your brush somewhere in sculpt mode and press control F and you could do it in painting, paint mode as well. And it would center your uh, camera around that point. So when you rotated, and especially when I'm on my Wacom, <coughs> excuse me, my, my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, I, I program a button with that. So I don't need to go to my keyboard and I'd have to have a keyboard with the numpad on as well. Uh, so the fact that they've got, uh, they've changed that to only the full stop and it doesn't always work in text paint mode it doesn't work uh, is frustrating uh, those little bits that those uh, really nice keyboard shortcuts that you have and in your head and you think oh that's brilliant uh, they just take it away uh, so hopefully I don't know maybe I need to contact them and say can you put control F back in please maybe it does something else but, um, but maybe they can keep that command in with another keyboard shortcut perhaps uh, but I've not actually reported any bugs or anything like that apparently it's quite easy you can go into some sort of help setting or something and report a bug. So I really need to do that. But I feel, I always feel like I'm not worthy of reporting a bug in some way. <laughs> so I go into there, the, uh, I don't know quite what to call this bug. It's the undo glitch bug uh, and it doesn't undo and crashes a lot and stuff. I, I don't know, is that how you say it? Or do you have to have some sort of technical language, which I haven't got? Anyway, there was my crash. I pressed undo and it went boom, <laughs> and disappeared and I didn't save it and it didn't save. It didn't do an auto save for me this time. So I had to redo that bit. Urgh. Frustrating. <laughs> That's not quite what I said at the time. I think uh, some choice words. Uh, Frank wasn't in the room, so he didn't get uh, uh, shouting at that time. <laughs> I, I don't know why I was so mean the last time things went wrong. Frank was trying to be nice. This is my dog, Frank. Uh, he's try whenever I get angry, he sort of tries to sort of comfort me. And then I shouted at him last time for getting, for trying to comfort me. That's just not fair, is it? Uh, anyway, back to the sculpt. <laughs> uh, I have, I've only done that once. He's, he's lovely. I'm really nice to him, honestly. <laughs> but he wasn't in the room this time to shout at, so that's a good thing. Anyway, back to the text painting. I thought I'd keep it really simple uh, and 
generally you it, it seems you can get away with that um, you don't have to be really fine on your lines especially with sort of organic shapes anyway when you're texture painting and you're thinking of doing sort of PBR type work uh, because sort of the reflections and the bump can kind of help you out uh, with the finer lines. I think I'm making sense there anyway. So you can be a little bit rough. Oh, there was another crash there and I didn't save it again. <laughs> Actually that was the one where I was swearing. This is the, I'd lost a fair bit of work at this point. Uh, and it's kind of boring work in a sense this one because I'm just filling in colours. You know when you're blocking in colours but you haven't got uh, seams to go by, so you have to just sort of, it's like coloring in basically. Nice and easy, but it's a bit dull until you get to those sort of intricate bits where you get sort of exciting paintwork done. I was gonna uh, just forget about it and not um, paint. I thought I'd, maybe I'll just put it up, but then I thought, no, I've got a bit of time because this is the last one, I can just paint it. I'm putting in red there, um, so that's behind the eye sockets. Uh, so it makes sense when the eye comes back, they're sort of bloodshot a bit. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, just uh, general painting, uh, simple stuff. What I did actually, um, I thought I'd try this out because the red bits on this are going to be more shiny, <coughs> excuse me, uh, because of uh, the fact that they've got some water, they're in the mouth and things. I took the red channel and plugged that into a colour ramp and then plugged that into the roughness. And <coughs> oh dear. And I'm not going to do any jump cuts, I'm not cutting it out, sorry about that. Uh, so, um, I did that as well for the bump as well, so I could get rid of the bump in that area because I wanted the sort of slight furriness, but you know, that was a bit rubbish, the bump. But um, taking that red channel uh, into the roughness and then sort of saying, uh, make that more shiny, uh, worked quite well. I was quite pleased that uh, has uh, tried that out. I saw uh, Chocker 4, I think it's called, um, I saw him do some sort of thing where he takes just the red channel out and uses that for roughness in lots of his PBR materials and I thought that's quite interesting and it works really well it's quite clever um, he's got some great stuff uh, Chocker for um, a quite um, intelligent use of blender if that's the right way of saying it so uh, look that up it's like Choco is in chocolate and fur uh, but uh, or for Choco fur Choco for not sure one of those two should find it when you look it up and uh, type in Blender. The last time I said Master Xeon, uh, <laughs> I didn't explain myself very well at all and someone was saying Master uh, Yazon and uh, the, yeah, a bit of confusion there, sorry about that. Uh, I should be a bit more, I should put the links in the description really, but it's, uh, it takes me a while to find the people and then put the links in and uh, by the time I've uploaded I'm so re uh, relieved that I've completed it that I'm happy and uh, yeah, I'm rambling now. Anyway, back to this, back to the rendering. So I thought I'd, I think I left all of it in, so doing the sort of uh, mixed nodes. So a slight bump uh, on the tongue at first, so a very, very slight. Um, and then changing the roughness and things like that, fairly straightforward. Putting ambient occlusion node in there and mixing it with the color node with a multiply, fairly straightforward stuff. Do you know what it didn't do is put the ambient occlusion up, but it seems to work anyway. I just completely forgot about that. It's really quick to render this one actually. It took uh, 0.01 second or something to render. <laughs> uh, so that was quite nice. So you can sort of see it going round as it's rendering and that's a really nice feeling. Anyway, there's the uh, final piece. Uh, I'm quite pleased with it, uh, as I said, but maybe it does need more ambient occlusion. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Tell me, do you think it needs more ambient occlusion? <laughs> uh, thoughts in the comments below, if you're still with me that is. Uh, thanks very much for everybody for all your support. I really am uh, appreciating it, appreciative of it. Anyway, uh, Discord server. Uh, trying Har Harpy was a tough one, I must say. So well done there. That's a clever one for smooth. I like that. Good thinking. Uh, delicate, nice, uh, nice delicate piece there. Uh, my internet was going in and out. It's it's back now, but uh, so some of these were taking a moment to load up. Yeah, nice. Uh, it's nice seeing stuff on Sketchfab, isn't it? Uh, Manu Hu there, done a nice pride, a few people did uh, lions with pride, uh, but you get a pride of lions of course, so it makes you think of lion doesn't it? It is a pride of lion I think anyway. Uh, some lovely work still here, brilliant stuff. Uh, it's it, Everyone has done exceptionally well, it's quite a hard challenge to do a sculpt a day and people have put lots of effort in. Um, I know how you feel, <laughs> we can sympathise with each other because it's it's quite a challenge isn't it? And uh, a bit people have been sort of posting, oh, a sculpt a day is just too much. It isn't, it's just we're taking it way too far uh, by like that sculpt there with the smooth 
uh, plaster. It uh, must have taken a long time, so well done. But we've, we've all taken it way too far. That's what the reality is. So just don't go overboard, it was the answer. <laughs> I'll probably have another uh, post about sort of summing everything up. So watch out for that one. In the meantime, thanks for watching.